This could have been the biggest steal in the MLB draft's history. Reggie Crawford is the two-way sensation out of UConn, and at only 21 years old, he's getting comparisons to Shohei Otani as the next great two-way player. I got to sit down with Reggie last week in Scottsdale, Arizona, to talk about his journey from where he was to where he is now, how he went from a freshman in high school throwing 86 to a sophomore in college touching 101, and how he's going to manage being a two-way player working up the minor leagues for the Giants. So, without further ado, enjoy the show. The show with Dan and Joe. This is episode two. This is episode three. Episode four. Episode five. And I better pull heavy in the lamp on a Eddie. I got three of us running valley. In New Dios, not for belly. Stay that money. I for Perry. I shoot jumpers. Call me Larry. Then they ain't yonkers. I need a Navy. Don't need a sponsor. Hurry to heaven. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the show. I guess we kind of started like kind of cold open. I kind of like that. You know, how Joe Rogan starts sometimes yeah. where it's just like them just talking. talking. Yeah. I guess we could have just kept it. it going. But dude, how are you doing? I'm doing well, brother. I appreciate you coming here. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, man. Um, why don't you introduce yourself to the people real quick who don't know you? This is Reggie Crawford. So yeah, take it from here. What's going on, guys? I'm Reggie Crawford. Uh, I was a 30th pick in this year's draft by the San Francisco Giants. I went to the University of Connecticut. Um, I'm a pitcher and a first baseman. Man, tell me about UConn. Like, that's kind of funny. Like, we were talking before, like, you went to UConn. It's just different seeing, like, a stud stud from UConn. Not that they don't have studs, but it's like you stood out even above, like, the pack of those guys. So what was it like? What was your choice out of high school to pick UConn? Yeah, so for me, my baseball career so far has been somewhat unique uh, because I was a swimmer my whole life. I swam oh. competitively. That was, like, that was my sport. I would swim 12 months out of the year, and I would play baseball probably three or four months out of the year. Um, so for me, the baseball circuit got started pretty late. I didn't play travel ball until the summer going into my senior year. And like, that's where my name got traction. I mean, I somehow made the area codes East coast pro. I think I was like one of the only uncommitted kids there. Um, so that definitely helped get my name out there. But from the day that I started playing travel ball, um, to the day I got drafted in high school, it was literally like 10 months. So it all happened within 10 months. And that's when like my name really started to get out there um, and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, for UConn, uh, for me, my biggest thing was I wanted to make sure that I went to a place to where they would take time to develop me. Mm. They would work with me, communicate with me in, in that sense to where like, I mean, you hear horror stories sometimes of SEC schools to where... Um, you know, it's just it's just one of those things. So I just felt like UConn was definitely going to be the spot for me. Yep. And essentially it was. I mean, I got everything I could have gotten mm-hmm. out of UConn. It was unbelievable. The coaches are great. Um, so I'm super fortunate, super thankful that I went there. Uh, but yeah, it was it was a it was a it was a pretty wild ride. Yeah. Coming up. So, dude, were you recruited pretty like highly for swimming? Was yeah. That, yeah. That was, so, so that was your number one sport. Yeah, that was my number That's one sport. Because so cool. like. Swimming for me was different than baseball. Like coming up, like I was always one of the best guys in the country. Whereas baseball, like I would do my little, little league, I do a local like baseball league around the area, and then like sometimes I would be a guest player if like teams huh. from the area are going somewhere else. But like ultimately, like swimming was my thing. Um, so the top two schools that I wanted to go to were Florida or Arizona State because Arizona State's I think he was on the women's side. Uh, it was Michael Phelps's coach. Wow. And then okay. Florida's coach, he's like a legend. So like, I would always go to like the kin- clinics, the camps, all that kind of stuff for swimming, all the big meets and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty cool, yeah. you know, but I'm happy I'm out of the water. That was, it was brutal. Yeah, dude, swimming's crazy. I know kids like 6 a.m. you wake up yeah. you're in the pool, like you're in the pool as much as you possibly can, right? Because exactly. it's like not as much stress on your like, yeah. joints and stuff, so mm-hmm. you can be in there longer. Yeah, dude, you get away with like, because I would get up at what, 4.30? I'd have practice at five, practice till 7.30. I'd have like 35 to 45 minutes of dry land after school, which is like light weights, abs, all that kind of stuff. And then a two and a half hour practice after that. And then occasionally I'd go for a two hour practice following that for like my, my travel swim team. So like it was insane, dude. And it's like one of those things where, like it's not like baseball where you, you pitch and you have to sit for a little bit, yeah. you have to recover. Like swim, you just go, 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 yeah. you know? So, I mean, and even then it's, you're in, you're in a pool, you're in a room of white walls, staring at a line at the bottom of a pool, dude. It's, it's brutal. It's brutal. It did you, did fun. you like it or you like, did you like it cause you liked it or did you like it cause you were good at it? I did not like it at all. <laughs> I did yeah. it because I was good you at it. You did it cause you were good And at like, it. even yeah. my friends, dude, like nobody really enjoyed it. I think I have one or two kids uh, that I swam with that, th- like they actually enjoyed the sport, but ultimately <laughs> like, I feel like, I think a lot of the swimmers could relate is 
like you just do it because you're good at it mm-hmm. and you'd be dumb not to. And ultimately that's, that's where you're at with that. Yeah. So. Did you ever take like pitching lessons or do any of that stuff or was baseball just kind of like a side? Yeah, thing? it was, it was pretty much a side thing for me. I never took lessons or anything. Um, I just, I, I had my local coaches growing up Yeah. and even until I got to college, like it was just pretty much what I thought baseball is like, how I thought hitting is like pitching, same thing. Like, no hands-on experience, just kind of going through the motions, doing what I had to do. Um, so I got, I got pretty far with it, you know, but then obviously you have to start putting more time into it, hmm. and that just comes with um, you're exposed to better coaching and stuff, which right. is obviously a, a big tool. Hmm. So out of high school, what were, like, your offers? Was UConn your best, or were there other ones? UConn was, was probably my best. It just made the most sense. Sure. Like, I had Missouri, Alabama, um, some ACC schools, but ultimately, like, for – academics, baseball, just coaching in general, like UConn was by far my best yeah. situation, best setup. UConn's fun, man. I, I know like pretty much everyone I know who's, you know, went to UConn is mm-hmm. like super passionate about it. And they exactly. like, they love their time there. It's stores, it, right? Stores, Connecticut. Yeah, stores yeah, Connecticut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, it, it's definitely a good spot. And like, I mean, you're right. Like, I mean, it's one of those things where there's, there's very few like big schools like that in the Northeast anyway. So it's like, the fan base is really cool. Like they really support UConn athletics as a whole, which is awesome. Yeah. I know it's a big thing. So me, when Joe and I first started this podcast, like mm-hmm. we'd talk about like D1 versus D2 or like, you know, would Tennessee beat UConn or just stuff like that, like hypotheticals mm-hmm. and everyone would get super pissed off. Cause he would say some crazy shit and I'd yeah. try to be like, well, I don't know, maybe I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Do you like, I know UConn is always super competitive. What, what do you think about like people like looking kind of down on schools from the Northeast at the D1 level? I mean, it's just one of those things. It's, I mean, it's, it's it's, there's a lot of noise, mm-hmm. right? And, I mean, you automatically – I mean, I guess schools in the Northeast get a lot of help in saying how, like, schools down south get to play all the time or, like, kids down south get to. But ultimately, I mean, I don't know. Especially with baseball, it's just one of those sports where anything can really go anyway, depending on the day, the pitcher, all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, yeah it really just depends on the circumstances and yeah, the situation. Man. Oh, man, so what was it like uh, your first time seeing the guys at UConn when you stepped on campus? Because were those like those must have been the best baseball players you'd ever seen in person, right? Like yeah. right when you got there. So was that kind of like a shock to you, or you know, compared uh, to you versus them? Yeah, it definitely was a little bit. I feel like I did a lot of a lot of research before I got there too. So it's like, all right, like what am what am I going to expect showing up? But like, yeah, seeing it in person, you're like, wow, like I've really never been exposed to these kind of players. Because in high school, I mean, I'm facing. 81 to 83 almost every single day because in Pennsylvania I mean you're really not going to see 90 roll out Mm -hmm. ever um so it definitely was different but it was it was really cool like I really enjoyed being in an area where like everybody everybody's just quality baseball player you know because then it you're 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 competing so you're pushing the guy next to you they're pushing you Uh so it's like everybody just gets better which is like really cool about it yeah. Um, so that was like that was pretty much my first experience in the baseball world of that kind of thing. All right, guys, I want to take a quick minute to talk about a sponsor of today's episode, which is Los Reyes Sunglasses. Now, you guys have seen me rock them before. I even talked about them last episode. We have a promo code. Like, it, it's dope. But their stuff is just so cool. Like, I, I genuinely think it's one of the dopest sunglass products. Really inexpensive, but really high quality. They've partnered with Tyree Kill. They've done stuff with Max Clark, Antonio Robinson. Like, all these guys, they've had some really cool people hop on and, and support them. And I'm so happy to be along for the ride with them. So make sure to use our promo code SHOW20. I mean, the pictures speak for themselves. This product is absolutely insane so thank you so much to los reyes for supporting go check out their website at sunglassesloserace.com and you can find a pair that's going to be dope for you because they have literally all different types of styles so appreciate los reyes and uh yeah thank you guys again go check them out all right guys you've seen us rock them before pictures only apparel they have their new pink line that just dropped it's so dope for breast cancer awareness month i mean dude just look at the shorts the shirt all that stuff like the pink and black it just looks so good together they also have their basic you know their normal colorways the white orange and black which is super dope and they have their only pink pictures which is a little takeoff only fans uh which is really funny so that's the blue and white line so they have some really cool stuff really high quality you can i mean all dope people have rocked them and you see eric sim rocking them you see robbie rowe i mean all these guys are repping it it's one of the biggest growing brand in the baseball space and of course for pitchers you gotta rock it you gotta so go check out their stuff you can work out in it uh you can just wear it around i wear it all the time so yeah go check them out use my promo code for 10 percent off dsarm for 10 percent off that's the promo code and yeah pitchersonly.com pitchers-only.com and yeah go check out pitchers only apparel 
Apparel. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring. Their stuff is super dope. And lastly, one question I ask a lot in interviews and get asked all the time is how to gain velo and how to gain bat speed. And obviously sometimes that answer isn't so simple, but in this case it is. This product is called Pro Velocity Bat and it's a tool designed to increase bat speed, improve mechanics, and it's one of the only trainers that can actually, you hit with, you can hit live baseballs with, which is super dope. It's being used by a ton of pros. I mean, you guys see on the screen, like ton of pro professional players are using it. A lot of guys are testing gains and bat speed to this. It's one of the best products in the market. The results are really impressive. In one study, they say D1 players saw a 10% bat speed increase in three weeks. So that's really significant and also very impressive. So definitely something to be said about that. Go check yours out at ProVelocityBat.com. Go get one. Use code DSON for $50 off. Thank you to ProVelocityBat for sponsoring. I think this is an amazing product and I wouldn't be talking about it if it wasn't. So you guys got to do check it out. If you're trying to increase your bat speed. I know we talked about pitchers a little bit. Now we're going to talk about hitters. So there we go. ProVelocityBat.com. Code DSON for $50 off. Let's get back to the episode. So I know you throw gas, but what was your velo like in high school versus now? Like, did you get like have a big spike or was it like, you know, slow progression? I had a big spike um, over the past couple of years. So I think like really dating back, I think my freshman year, just for just for the, the viewers, I think my freshman year, I think I was like 86, sophomore year, 88, uh, junior year, 90. So like gradual and then senior year, 94. Got to campus like 94, 95, and then that's when I made the jump to like 101. Yeah. <laughs> but that's just that, that, the difference was just the fact that I was, I had no direction. I was just doing random stuff on the mound. I was a thrower, not a pitcher. Mm. And then when I got the hands on attention, the coaching, uh, got exposed to different, just, I mean, Google is my best friend. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just doing a ton of research, trying to figure out what works for me, what doesn't work, analyzing video, all that kind of stuff. And then that's when you see a, a jump like that. Dude, when did you hit, first hit triple digits? Uh, it was on the Cape yeah, yep. two years ago. Uh, yeah, middle of summer on the what Cape. What team did you play for? Uh, Born Braves. Yeah, okay. Yep. Do you know Cody Morissette? Yeah, I know of He was him. on the, them the year before, I think. Yeah, yeah. we played against them because he went to BC. Yep. Yeah. So, like, we follow each other and stuff. So, we know He's from other. Exeter. So, I love my Exeter guys. Really? So, like, we got Cody, who's, you know, a second-round pick uh, yeah. to the Marlins. And then Hunter Long is a tight end for the Dolphins. He's a third-round pick. Really? Small little town in New yeah, Hampshire. Seriously. So, New Hampshire, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, man. So, you know, you obviously throw pretty hard. What's, like, your, you know, biggest advice to someone who wants to gain velo? Um, I think, for me, it was just gaining strength and utilizing my body as efficiently as possible. And the way you do that is just like mobility. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to crush mobility. Um, I'm a fairly mobile and flexible person, but I mean, I feel like the, the strength and then the mobility, they just really work together. But essentially like you could have all of it, you could have as much as you want, you know, but if you don't know, know how to use your body efficiently, it's almost like you can only get so much out of it. Right. So everything, especially when you get higher and higher, it's one of those things where everything really has to work together because like the smallest changes then make the big difference. But when you get those changes, it's harder to find those differences you need to make. So, yeah. um, yeah, I feel like mobility and strength were definitely my biggest, biggest factors that went into it. What were your biggest, like most important resources outside of like coaches at UConn? Like you said, you like Google and stuff. Mm -hmm. where, where were you going to find that kind of information? A big one for me was Trevor Bauer. Yeah. Like the breaking points of Trevor, or, yeah, I think it was breaking points of Trevor Bauer. Like he would break down like what he's thinking against what batter and how that sets up for like at bat one, two, three, all that kind of stuff. So as far as just like pitching in general, like that was the biggest tool for me. Um, but ultimately for Velo, dude, like I, I wasn't chasing Velo. I was just trying to become a pitcher. And then the Velo is something that just it was a perk of that honestly mm -hmm. dude that's like that's the best case scenario though right because exactly. you become a pitcher and also you become a really good thrower mm -hmm. at the same time do you throw like plyos or anything do you do driveline stuff long toss just long toss and j-bands what's your warm-up j-bands and then like, yeah. active and then yep. j-bands so ever since i got here um, my warm is a little bit different it's obviously a little bit more in-depth for what i need personally um but i mean back in college you do your typical uh like stretching mobility all that kind of stuff get your body moving. And then for me, like J-bands, I would do your typical exercises. And then ultimately we just go throw. Just go, yeah, you just know? go throw, just yeah. Just gradually work my way back. And I feel like I was long tossing almost like every day, you know, cause that's what I felt set my body, set my arm up for, for success. Yeah. Um, was just learning how to throw at different intensities from different distances. And I think that really gave me a ton of my arm strength. Are you a big proponent of like throwing year round or do you take like, you know, four, six week breaks at a time? I take, I would take some rest, um, but 
not a ton. I think I'd maybe take a month out of the year. Uh, but even for me, like I, I threw what eight innings in college baseball, and that summer um, I maybe threw fifteen to twenty. So it's like I haven't been throwing a ton. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a like it, again, it's just a it's a weird situation. Um, but yeah, it, it's one of those things where I would try to throw as often as I can, and obviously you have to be smart about it. Um, but I would take a little bit of time to to just let my arm relax yeah for a little bit what's your max long toss have you ever like stretched it out i haven't stretched it. yeah my long toss isn't that good honestly really? yeah like last time i was on a field where you could really calculate distance i mean it was a football field so it was probably 105 yards oh really yeah, yeah. yeah nothing like crazy i'm not do, throwing huh. it through yeah do you ever just, pull down do pull downs or anything no no i like i i've never done a pull down for velo mm. but i've done it like on my way in from long toss gotcha and dude i totally forgot you're two-way like i was thinking yeah. i love talking about pitching <laughs> and i realized you can hit too what do you think you're better at hitting or pitching what do you like more i guess maybe it's different i'm, I'm split 50 50 dude mm-hmm. you know it's just one of those things where like i love hitting a home run i love striking a dude out so it's like i don't i don't sway the direction um and yeah, it's just one of those things where I'm going to try to make it work as long as possible. And the most difficult part, I, I always tell people this, it's like the planning is by far the most difficult part because like when I was doing both and when we had no plan, I would just play eight innings at first base, then go on the mound. Like that's really, that's not sustainable. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not good for your body, arm, yeah. mind, anything, you know, whereas like in the summer when I started to throw more, it's like, all right, like this day I'm going to throw, I'm going to hit these days, this day I throw. And that just made it so much mm-hmm. easier. And that's when you kind of open yourself up to success. Um, so yeah, it just comes to down to all the moving parts have to work together yeah. opposed just kind of against one another. And that's when you kind of, see see things start to fail so you were drafted as a two-way obviously so did the giants want you to go as long as you can like are they pretty open about that idea they they are that's so cool man they it is really cool and they like i mean thank god for them because they want their guys to have their hands on me in a sense of all right like i get to work with the pitching coaches hitting coaches use technology i've never had my hands on before mm-hmm. so i think like really when i get my hands on that kind of stuff i'm just going to take off with it yep. and i think they agree um, which is why I'm super excited for yeah. it. Yeah, and you've probably heard this a million times, but like seeing how Shohei balances it, right? Like mm-hmm. he has, he's probably very regimented, and he has his, you know, his days for this, hours for this, whatever. Like mm-hmm. he's all baseball. I think maybe you could use his model. I don't know what his model is, but as a way to like, have you thought about that? Like with Shohei's model? Yeah, I want to like find a way to like talk to him. Yeah, because <laughs> like I mean, obviously he's an animal, and like he's definitely doing stuff that like n- not many people know of. You know, and I would love to know like what his regimen is, like what he's doing, so that he's able to maintain that. Because I mean, it's it's difficult because it's 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 not sustainable for a lot of people. You know, and obviously he's a big guy and he's he's very gifted, but there's more that goes into it. Mm-hmm. Um, which is why I'm gonna try I'm gonna try to do research on to, to, to figure out how I could like kind of get an inside scoop Dude, like what he's doing you could definitely like just get a phone call or something or like it's email with him just be like hey like what's your plan look like i don't know if the, i know the angels would be try. like no like we don't want him to have that but that's so cool man that's so cool how you know he kind of broke down that barrier of like uh, two-way guys and like someone can do it and obviously he's like a freak of freaks but mm-hmm. like it's possible. Like it, it is it's possible. Done. It's, it's been, so you could be second in line. I think that's just like so it's sick. It's crazy, dude. Yeah. It's like, it's so cool. He's really paving the way for two ways because yeah, before him, it's like, I feel like people weren't really open-minded about it. Cause it's like, yeah, how many guys have done it? And still how many guys have done it, yeah. you know, but he's but, able to yeah. not just do it, but he's doing it like an MVP level, you mm-hmm. know? So that's what's, that's what's really cool about it. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, thank God for him for paving the way, yeah. but he is showing that it really can be done. And like, hey, one is a lot more than zero. You know what I exactly. mean? Like one person who's done it. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, it's so exciting, man. Um, so what was, I'm trying to even think where to go from. I have so many questions. <laughs> um, do you think hitting, I, I think I know the answer, but does hit, being a hitter help you as a pitcher? And does being a pitcher help you as a hitter, like perform at both? Definitely, yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, you, you kind of have like the inside scoop. Because, I mean, you hear, like I used to read on like, some of the some of the greats in the past, they would like read books on like say a hitter would read a book on a pitcher to kind of see what they're thinking. But like for me, it's I have that internally. You right, know, like right, what I'm right. thinking on the mound, yeah. I'm able to kind of analyze that as a hitter and vice versa, which is really cool. But ultimately, like you can only go get so much out of that. So like that's why I like to kind of branch away and like just talk to people in the organization, talk to my friends, because like they may think about things differently than you. So then it's like if you just kind of work that sense then i mean 
it you you could add a lot of tools to your toolbox dude i love it just like asking questions and trying to like Always. learn as much just like be a sponge you know just literally like ask people you have to um, i remember talking to i don't know if you know boston flannery he's kind of from yeah, the area yeah. and then uh, charlie soto so i had a, i did a podcast with both of them uh-huh. and uh, i was talking to drew yesterday like they're both righties they both are gas they're both nasty but charlie says he just gets on the mound and just throws as hard as he can like yeah. he doesn't think about anything he doesn't even training off the field he's just like i'm just gonna lift heavy weight or whatever mm-hmm. and boston's like boston meditates he journals he yeah. like does all this stuff like he does hypnosis like he does really? crazy things to like uh-huh. make him perform. Uh, what's like your mindset routine? Do you have anything specific? Yeah. So I journal in the morning. I've been meditating when I wake up, yep. go to sleep, all that kind of stuff. And I'm just playing around with like what works, what doesn't work. Um, because in the past I didn't like meditation. I just felt like it was really slow. It didn't really help me a ton, but now I'm kind of, my mind's changing on that. Um, and I'm definitely more open-minded to it. So that's why I'm kind of like playing around and again, like being a sponge and, it's like trial and error, like what works, what doesn't work. And ultimately, you never really know unless you give it a shot. Mm-hmm. So right now, yeah, I'll journal in the mornings and at nights. I'll uh, like listen to podcasts. I'll meditate, all that kind of stuff. Because, I mean, ultimately, like I don't think it could hurt you. You know, yeah. it could only help. Um, so, yeah, that like it's it's definitely a tool. And, I mean, if you're able to, again, like I was talking about, there comes a point where you need to kind of go out of your comfort zone in that sense to where like when you're really like another mile an hour, like a mile an hour is a lot, you Mm -hmm. know, it's, it's, and as you get higher and higher and higher, it's harder and harder, you know, so you got to try to find ways to make it easier for you and kind of close the, close the gaps. Yeah. Do you read too? Not a ton. Really? Okay. I have Audible. Like, yeah, I yeah. listen to audiobooks, but I feel like I'm always go, go, go. Yeah. So it's like, say I'm going to the gym or to the complex, like I throw an audiobook on. Mm. So it's like, that's not just a waste of time. And I'll listen to music occasionally, yep. but ultimately, like, you, you should want to squeeze as much out of a day as you possibly mm-hmm. can without obviously burning yourself out, but you should try to maximize any moment throughout your day. Yeah, that's like me. I'm constantly either listening to a podcast or yeah. audible. Like when I'm even walking around to a class or through exactly. campus, I'm just like plugged in. Cause I feel like it's wasted time. If I, I agree, bro. What you are your to. recommendations for like audiobooks or, or podcasts or both? Uh, well mine are like my, my books and audiobooks are big on like business. So mm-hmm. I'm listening to rich dad, poor dad. Let's right go. Now. That's a huge, that's yeah. a big one. I haven't read it yet, but I know that really? one's like yeah, super cause big. I, yeah. I mean, I've been asking around, um, but that, that's the one that I'm on right now. But, uh, yeah, it, it's good so far. And I, I haven't listened to David Goggins yet. I mean, no, it's like you, old news now. I've listened to it every year. The start of baseball really? season, every year I would listen to it. I bro. still haven't yet. I don't know how, but uh, Dude, I'm going to start gonna listening like, to that afterwards. You, like, oh, I got chills. It's just crazy. Thinking, bro, it's, it's like it's 13 hours of just like pure like motivation yeah. like in the gym. You're just like, go. You're like, you'll, you just would have worked out and then you're in, in, eating dinner and you're listening to it. You're like, I got to go back. Yeah. Like, he's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's it's insane. really, that's the best audiobook I've listened to. Really? And, and, and they do a part in it where it's like, so someone else reads most of it, but yeah. every chapter, uh, the guy who reads it and then David do a little podcast segment talking oh, really? about the chapter. So uh-huh. on Audible, it's like 25 minutes of David breaking yeah. down like that part of the no chapter. Way. It's really cool. Um, what other books have you read like or on audio or audio books? Yeah. So, um, so the one that I just finished one, what was it called? Um, Atomic Habits. Bro, I, I was just about finished to ask you about one. Atomic Habits. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just finished that one. But yeah, dude, it's like my biggest, like I, I, honestly prefer podcasts Mm -hmm. because you have the books but like then you you have the guys to where like all right say it's a uh like a life skills coach or stuff like that to where like they could provide tips then and it's kind of like real life not just like all right like this book was written say 10 years ago like it's kind of like live time like things are changing as as life goes on you know so that's that's kind of why i prefer those honestly dude that's how i feel when i see um like a podcast from like 2014, like yeah. that, I'm like, maybe I'll go I to know. the 2021, yeah, 20, 22. Cause like, like the amount of things that, that have, changed, have yeah. happened and changed since then research that's come out, you know? So that's why I kind of like just try to stay up to date on those. And that's like uh-huh. podcasts. I feel like are the best way of doing that. Yeah. What podcast do you listen to? Uh, my biggest one right now is mindset mentor. Yeah. Okay. Rob Dial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I listen to him a ton. Cool. So that, that's like my main guy right mm-hmm. now. I listen to, have you ever listened to, um, I listened to one called My First Million, which is like an entrepreneurial one. Really? But it's funny because for me, like, I, for some reason, I think business and like entrepreneurship, they so much crossover yeah, with it sports. Really does. So like, it gets me in that same mindset as like a ba- like. If you ever listen to Cressy's podcast, like his is like baseball I haven't specific. Listened to Cressy's. It's cool. So it's like he does a few episodes, but some of them are like really deep into like you know, should you deadlift like stuff like that's yes. really specific, or it's like long toss, or it's just like a story about someone's. Yeah. Like, playing career mm-hmm. so sounds cool but yeah the business ones are really cool too yeah they really are um if you had to recommend any like resource to someone just to like gain knowledge what would it what would it be 
dude, I feel like YouTube is such yes. a tool. It's like the easiest, bro. Like, mm-hmm. it, it's one of those things where, yes, like, just because it's on there does not mean it's, uh, you should really listen to it. Um, but honestly, like, there's, there's so much on YouTube and it's so accessible. You can literally just go on how to and just learn about so many different things. Like, yeah. like we were talking about, like the YouTube, the editing, and like obviously baseball. Like there's so many different resources, so many different people you could find on there that could help you a ton. Because like ultimately like that YouTube was my biggest tool for one of my biggest tools for getting velo and yeah. just like learning the game. Trevor Bauer, it was on YouTube. Yeah. You know, I just typed in like like uh, big leaguer talking about pitching and that, video and that shows like, up. i'm like yeah. dude like this is perfect mm-hmm. and like he had a whole series i'm like wow like i never knew unless i just t- searched just looked up, it up yeah you know? dude i love youtube i've been like a youtube's biggest i've been wanting to be like a youtuber and i've loved that uh-huh. since like 2014 like since i was like yeah, 11 dude. years old i've just been like i love it which is cool because you make youtube videos yeah. and like you don't see a lot of guys in your position like vlogging and stuff so like wh- why'd you start doing that well dude i was the same way like i used to go to sleep watching vlogs of, yeah like, people because i was just like i my biggest thing was i would just I'm so fascinated by just successful people and people who've built their brands and wealth and all that kind of stuff. So like I would just try to find people who would document their daily lives and obviously they could pick and choose what to put in there, but ultimately like you could see what goes into their day and what makes them who they are. Yeah. You know, so I would just like I would cue at, like probably three or four videos yeah. and I would go to sleep to like that. Casey Neistat or what yeah, you like Casey at? Neistat yeah, yeah. and like all that kind of stuff. And like Logan Paul I used to watch in the past too because like yeah. I mean he gets a lot of love. He gets a lot of hate. But ultimately, he's really good at what he does, you know? So it's like you could just watch and learn from, like, what they do. And, I mean, obviously, it's not the biggest platform, but I have somewhat of a platform. People are so curious as to what goes into my life. And I feel like a lot of people, baseball players don't really do that. Um, so that's kind of why, why I want to be one of those people who, yeah. uh, I mean, people could look forward to, like, videos coming out. Like, what do I do throughout my day? To where, I, I feel like... I, I catch myself thing. I'm like, I don't think anybody cares about this, you know, but ultimately like some people, people do, care, you know? Yeah. And, and that's what I need to kind of get away from right now is like, yeah. all right, like, am I going to put this in? Like nobody cares, but like there are little kids. Even like, if how one person. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dude. Like that really do care. Yeah. You know? So it, it's definitely, it's definitely enjoyable. And like, I love editing videos and like, I actually appreciate like the work that goes into videos because I get it, yeah. you know? Um, like getting different shots, all this kind of stuff, the technology. So no, it's it's cool. I'm I remember it. when I saw your your vlog, or what, maybe it was your first vlog, or was it the first one I saw. I uh-huh. saw like the way you cut it up, the drone shots and stuff. I was like, this guy's seen Casey. <laughs> yeah. Like I just knew it. And it's funny. I've been on a big Logan Paul like kick right recently mm-hmm. because like I'm catching up on all his vlogs. I didn't watch him for a while. Yeah. And I'm like, oh man, like he does it so. It's just so. In- it's inspiring to me because it's it like is. he built that from mm-hmm. nothing, and exactly. people like I have shit to say about him. But it's like I, I respect what he's built, and it's like impulsive is really cool I listening agree, to dude. those stories. And mm-hmm. man, that's super cool. Yeah. yeah. Ah, that's I love talking to someone about like yeah, the YouTube I know, shit because like it gets it's, it's, it's fun. I, once I get going, I can talk about it. I like, know, oh, me dang, too. Bro. That's so funny. Um, but yeah, we just did like 28 minutes. You want to get Schmikey yeah. on the podcast? Schmikey, yeah. we're rolling too. So if you All guys right, want to, yeah, I'm yeah. ready. Is this a good spot? I think this is good. You can see you. I guess this is. I can. I can see you fine. Like the camera can see, yeah, so, so it's no biggie. Um, but yeah, man, how you doing? I'm doing great. I feel like we were just talking, but it's been a while. A lot has happened since then. I think it's been two months. Right? Yeah, it feels like it's like two weeks ago. Yeah. Hit a pen and pull up heavy in the lamp on a Eddie. I got three of us run the valley. The new deals never belly. Stay that money, I feel Perry. I shoot jumpers, call me Larry. Then they need youngers, I need a Navy. Don't need a sponsor, hurry.